Back in 1934, Detroit Lions owner George Richards was known for his marketing acumen. Despite that fact, his team was failing to attract the crowd at their games. So Richard came up with a gimmick. His squad would play on Thanksgiving and it worked like an absolute charm. Not only did they fill the stadium, but they actually had to turn people away because they couldn't fit everybody in. But that's not it. See, Richard negotiated a deal with NBC to broadcast the game across the country. And that's basically why the Lions play on Thanksgiving every single year. Now, with that said, we all know or can at least infer that the Lions have lost more games on Thanksgiving than they've won. I checked the stats. It's close, but they have. But they did have this one great run between 2007 and 2015. Not saying that they were necessarily winning, but they were at the very least putting on display one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play in the NFL. If the Lions were a better team, realistically, Calvin Johnson could be suiting up for them this Thanksgiving. And despite his early retirement, he's admitted as much saying that if the Lions were a better team, there's a very good chance he would have continued to play. But the irony is, Calvin Johnson, the guy they call Megatron, walks away from the NFL in his prime. So today, we briefly discuss his illustrious career and why it came to a screeching halt. This is what happened to Calvin Johnson, AKA Megatron. Cue the way. So Calvin Johnson has been a massive figure well before his NFL days. In 10th grade, he stood 6'4 as the starting receiver for Sandy Creek High in Tyrone, Georgia. And bro, dude was a dog from day one. By the time his senior year rolled around, he was ranked as a top five wide receiver in the country and the best player in the state of Georgia by several different publications. Now, as many of you already know, Calvin Johnson decided to attend Georgia Tech. And when you're thinking about a dominant wide receiver, you don't expect to find him at Georgia Tech. You just don't. You're talking a triple option powerhouse, right? But somehow Georgia Tech pulled off this recruiting upset against Georgia, Miami, Notre Dame. All of these first class football schools offered Calvin Johnson, but he chose Georgia Tech. Why? Well, proximity to home definitely has something to do with it. It's pretty close to where Calvin Johnson grew up. But the other two factors that I was able to find are facts that probably aren't super well known. One, Calvin Johnson, or his parents at least, were super serious about academics. Now, all parents want you to do well when it comes to academics, but when you're the number five wide receiver in the nation, it's rare that you're gonna be so serious about academics that you really put that over football. You know what I mean? When it comes to your college choices. The other thing is that Calvin Johnson was a really good baseball player and Georgia Tech actually wanted him to play both football and baseball at the school. The only reason he didn't play baseball was because his mom would not allow him to. She told him he had to pick one sport because she felt that if he played two sports, he would never have any time for his academics and would, you know, therefore fall behind. Just thinking about how much stuff you actually have to do just to be a student athlete playing one sport, Moms was probably right. Calvin Johnson played three years at the Run Heavy School, made first team all ACC in all of them. He won ACC Rookie of the Year as a freshman and then won ACC Player of the Year as a junior. He's got the most receiving yards, most receiving touchdowns, and most 100 yard receiving games in Georgia Tech history. During Calvin's final season in college, he won the Belitnikov Award, which was an acknowledgement of him being the best receiver in college football. With that said, Calvin constantly showed that there was more to him than just the game. During that same year that he won the Belitnikov Award and finished 10th in the Heisman voting, he worked on a project building solar latrines to help the sanitation in Bolivia. What a goat. And later, he'd be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, first ballot. The man weighed into the NFL combine 6'5", 239 pounds, bro. That's 240, all right? He ran a 4'3'5". 
He had a 42 inch vertical and an 11 and a half foot broad jump. When you couple that with this production, it would not have been a shocker to see him go first overall. But Actually, they could have taken Calvin Johnson with the quarterback situation the way it is right now. Jamarcus Russell's going to immediately energize that Raider Nation, that fan base, that football team on the practice field in that locker room. Three years from now, you could be looking at a guy who's certainly one of the elite top five quarterbacks in this league. Therefore, Calvin Johnson went second to the Detroit Lions. After a brief holdout, Calvin signed a $64 million contract, which back in 2007 made him the highest paid Detroit Lion of all time. That record, of course, has since been broken multiple times. It didn't take long for Calvin to become a favorite of the fans and his teammates. Veteran wide receiver Roy Williams nicknamed him Megatron due to Calvin's big hands and overall towering physique. I mean, thinking back, Calvin was definitely more of a prime, but whatever. Roy Williams probably watched Transformers once when he was a kid and just had the name still there. Anyway, it stuck and it's a dope name, so cool. Calvin's injury issues that would end his career after his ninth season were already somewhat of an issue during his first season. A back injury bothered him throughout his rookie year and he revealed that he had to take Vicodin twice per game just to get through the final month of the season. And if you know what comes later, you can already start to see why. Calvin finished his injury riddled rookie season with 48 catches for 756 yards and 4 TDs. The 2008 season is one that Calvin will always remember. He went over a thousand receiving yards for the first time in his career, led the league in wide receiver touchdowns, also a career first. Yet somehow, he didn't make the Pro Bowl. Why was he snubbed? Maybe it's because his team was the first to go absolutely winless ever since the NFL implemented a 16 game season. And oh yeah, Detroit, we coming. The following year, they drafted Matt Stafford out of Georgia, but he and Calvin both dealt with injuries that season and the Lions won only two games. Still, is an improvement, right? From 2010 through the rest of Calvin's career, he and Matt Stafford developed a great chemistry where Matt kind of throws it up to the 6'5", 4'3", running beast of a man and he catches it, right? Stafford had the arm strength and the gunslinger mentality that Megatron needed in order to get past his throne where he might not look open, but the man is always open. Calvin Johnson played six seasons with Matt Stafford and made the Pro Bowl in all of them except that first year. You know, the one where he got snubbed and led the league in touchdowns that year. And once you consider all that, you gotta give Matt Stafford credit because once he came in the league, Megatron put up Pro Bowl numbers literally every year since. Megatron was at his absolute peak during 2010, 2011, 2012, and 13 four dominant seasons where he led the NFL in receiving yards twice, including the year he broke Jerry Rice's single season receiving yard record with 1,964 receiving yards. Damn near 2,000 yards, bro, the man was unstoppable. Now I know I just said he was at his absolute peak from 2010 to 2013, but he was still definitely in his prime from a production standpoint in 2014 and 2015. That's why it sent shockwaves through the NFL world when he announced his retirement following the 2015 season. Tons of people were shocked and it's hard to blame him because people don't usually walk away after having the type of season that this man had. In his final season, he caught 88 passes, the third highest total of his entire career. He had 1,200 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. Dude was far from washed and was still one of, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL during that year. He also didn't sustain a season ending injury or anything like that. And most of the stuff he was dealing with the general public had no idea about. During Calvin's career, he sustained a plethora of injuries, bone bruise in his back, at least nine concussions, busted up foot, messed up knees, a finger that's permanently bent at an angle. Crazy enough, when he sustained that finger injury, the Lions told him, look man, you can play with that, just fix it after you retire, crazy. Now, Calvin's a smart guy, and it wasn't hard for him to realize that the team really didn't care about his well-being. As long as they could push him out there on that field, he can get 1,200 receiving yards. Cool, they didn't care about anything else. He figured that out early. Okay, this is a business relationship, and he treated it as such. Now, keep in mind, this cat has been playing through injuries since his rookie season 
in the NFL. In order to deal with those injuries, the Lions would essentially give out opioids. Vicodin, Percocet, Oxycontin, they was popping them like Skittles. Calvin was right there in that bunch. He was taking what his employer told him was legal to take, and it was legal, but it just wasn't healthy, it wasn't safe. Calvin hated the way the pills made him feel, so he opted for something a little more natural. Marijuana. In a post-retirement interview with Sports Illustrated, Calvin admitted to using marijuana after almost every single game of his NFL career. We know it's something that's frowned upon in the league, but honestly, it doesn't make any sense. And it's a far better alternative than the stuff that they're giving the players now. Here's a quote of Calvin recalling one instance of him getting a concussion and the team telling him that he didn't have a concussion. Bam, hit the ground real hard. I'm seeing stars, I can't see straight, but I know a couple minutes I'm gonna be fine because I've done this plenty of times before. But the problem came in 2012 when Calvin told reporters that he suffered a concussion in the game versus the Vikings. The issue was that would get the Lions in a world of trouble. So they came out and said, and they still maintain this by the way, they say that Calvin passed the concussion protocol and he was fine. Then they turned around and made him apologize and say that he misused the word concussion and that that really isn't what happened. They made him change his story. Calvin Johnson had actually contemplated retirement for a while before he actually went through with it. Prior to the 2015 season, he almost walked away, but he was unsure. Dude was in constant pain and just getting out of the bed every day was becoming a challenge. Still, he figured out a way to manage his pain, drug himself out there on the field, and still put up unbelievable numbers. Today, Calvin pulls for the Lions players, but not necessarily the organization. There's definitely some bad blood there after Megatron sacrificed his body for the team, only to have them turn around and make him pay back a portion of his signing bonus when he retired. Now, Megatron admits he didn't necessarily need the money, but of course, neither does the organization. And while the Lions definitely had a legal right to do it, they didn't have to do it. And it's something that you just don't do to one of the best players who's ever played for your organization and is retiring because his body is beat down. For a comparison's sake, when Andrew Luck retired, the Colts allowed him to keep his $32 million signing bonus instead of being petty and making him pay it back. And it's funny because the Lions actually had the exact same thing happen when Barry Sanders retired. They made him pay back a portion of his signing bonus and he had friction with the organization for years because of that. They finally settled it, but they've yet to settle with Calvin. Today, Calvin Johnson says he barely follows the NFL. He doesn't watch, he really doesn't keep up with it. But he hasn't lost his love of the game, just of the business. He still runs an annual camp for younger kids back in his hometown that he's been doing his entire career. When it comes to his bread, do straight. In his career, he earned well over $100 million. He invests in real estate, runs a consulting company that helps athletes prep for life after sports, and of course, he founded a marijuana company called Primitive. Now, Calvin's well aware that his early retirement is gonna hurt his Hall of Fame bid. And he even says that he doesn't expect to get in first ballot. He says if he does get in, that's amazing. But if he doesn't, he ain't tripping. He really doesn't care. He says awards are just compliments. And if he gets the compliment, cool. But if he don't, cool. Here's a quote. I was a beast during that time. I was hands down the best receiver in the game. I'm not gonna argue with you, but I know I was. Well, dude ain't gonna get no pushback from me. He was the best in the game at that time. He was absolutely dominant. He put up video game numbers in the short career that he had, and he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I really hope in the future, a lot more NFL players adopt Calvin's mindset. Now, every player can't do this because every player is not an all-time great. Every player doesn't get a $100 million contract. I understand that. But I feel like way too many players hang on to the game too long. They continue to sacrifice their health and well-being for a team that claims to love them, but will trade or release them the second they no longer have that same value as a player that they once did. Megatron is one of the few guys I've covered that wasn't forced out of the league, could still play, but was smart enough to know when it was time to get out. He doesn't need the Hall of Fame to validate his career. He knows he was that dude during his time, and that's enough for him. He doesn't care what the Hall of Fame voters think. And listen bro, compliments and validation from others is great. But if you really that dude that whatever you do, you don't need nobody else to tell you. You already know. Happy Thanksgiving. 
I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. My name is Slim Low Raps. One. Yeah, I'm not no quitter. Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go again.